How to calculate the perfect offer price for your real estate wholesaling deals. What's up guys, Zach in here with Flip with Rick. And yes, in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to calculate the perfect offers on your initial offers for your real estate wholesaling appointments. If you're doing virtual wholesaling or regular wholesaling, in this video, I'll show you how to do the calculations. You shouldn't be spending more than 10 to 15 minutes at most figuring out what you can offer and what's the most you can really offer with your motivated sellers for your real estate wholesaling business. And before we get into it, before I really share this information, do me a favor, smash that like button and subscribe so you get more information from me. So overall, what is the perfect offer to give out to your motivated sellers? If you're on the phone, or maybe you're in person or you're actually trying to do a virtual wholesaling deal, what's the right offer to give? And truthfully, I can just tell you this, and you're gonna exit out of the video, but really quickly, the best, the most perfect offer to give is no offer at all. And in most cases, that's the best case, but sometimes we have to give an offer or maybe the seller gives an offer first and it's a really high price and we have to give them our offer, which we're gonna make it perfect. We're gonna make sure it's gonna be the perfect amount where it's not too low, where someone gets really offended, but it's not too high where we lose out on some money. So it's really cool. This is the actual offer percentages that I tell all of our acquisitions people and really the one that I've been using for the past four years for wholesaling real estate. No, you don't need an advanced calculus degree. You don't need to be a crazy mathematician, arithmetic type person to really understand those calculations. What you need to understand basically is three simple things. Number one, you have to understand what is ARV. ARV is the after repair value. Next, we gotta understand is repairs, and next is MAO, which is the max allowable offer. So really quickly, ARV. ARV, in my terms, because ARV for a lot of wholesalers, oh my gosh, this is like a bit, huge pet peeve with me. ARV is what the property is worth after everything's perfectly on the market, what are nice homes like that selling for on the market? That's the best way I can put it. People make it seem like it's a super crazy complicated thing, but it's really not. ARV, let's say for example, of 123 Main Street. 123 Main Street needs a lot of work, but it's a three, it's a three bedroom, two bath, 1,000 square foot house in the Smithfield subdivision. And it was built in 1999. What I can go from there is look at other three twos that are thousand square feet built in 1999 in that subdivision and look at what are the really nice homes like that selling for? What is that property that I'm looking at? How much would it be worth after I repair it and put it in almost perfect condition? New roof, AC's updated, the flooring's all nice. What is that thing gonna be worth? And no, the ARV is not what the thing's worth right now. It's what it's worth after the repairs. Next here is repairs. So repairs is basically the cost of, let's say fixing that roof, that AC, redoing the floors, fixing some of the wood sheath outside or a stucco crack, repainting the walls, things like that. I mean, really a lot of homes. I mean, most houses that we go see on our wholesaling appointments usually always need at least 20 grand to even be near the ARV unless the thing's really nice. And the best way for you to know how much the repair cost is, now I'm telling you, ARV, most wholesalers don't even know how to calculate it right or they do it way too high. Repairs, people usually do it too low. Uh, what you need to understand is you need to get your numbers right here. So the best way to know what the best price for repairs are. Now I'm out here in Port St. Lucie, Florida. The cost of a new roof, especially with the regulations with hurricanes, is, is definitely a lot different than maybe replacing a roof in Macon, Georgia. So what I want you to do is call your local roofers, your AC guys, your general contractors, and ask them for an 1,000, 1,500, and 2,000 square foot home, how much it costs to repair a bed, a bathroom, a bedroom, flooring, carpets, AC, wood siding repairs, really get rough estimates on all these things. So when you go on an appointment, you can see, hey, I know this is the cost here, this is the cost there, that's the cost there. Generally, repairs need to be very general. You don't wanna to go to an appointment with a pen and paper and start calculating the repairs. You can get a rough idea in your head, but really understand that you're not really here to understand the repairs like to a T. Just be very rough numbers. You wanna know if the thing needs 50K or the thing needs 10K in repairs. And lastly is the MAO, which is the max allowable offer. 
This is the thing that gives me a lot of beef in the wholesaling real estate community. I think in most cases, the MAO is absolutely stupid and I'm going to break down exactly why. And really it doesn't even matter. And in all essence, the reason why I think most calculations don't work is because, Hey, if I had a $5,000 deal, I was going to make $5,000 in a wholesale assignment fee. And you're watching me right now. Would you, would you not get that deal if you're going to make $5,000, but it's outside your max allowable offer. Most wholesaling coaches and gurus say you calculate the MIO, which is basically 70% ARV minus repairs. The ARV minus repairs multiplied by 70%. That's the most you can offer for your real estate wholesaling deals. And that's the most you can do on your offer. But what a lot of these coaches don't tell you is that means that most deals that I have to, at minimum, I'm going to make 20K. I'm telling you right now, if I get a $5,000 deal and I can sign that thing and make 5K, obviously I want to make more but I'm going to take it. Like we do $5,000 deals here at Flip with Rick and we're not the most excited about them, but $5,000 is $5,000. Like I'm not going to run away from that. So let's break down what most wholesaling coaches and gurus do to get, to get their perfect offers and how I'm a little bit different. So most coaches and gurus will tell you this is the perfect offer. And it's, it was good for like 2014, 2013, but you know, it's 2021, things are a lot different. Uh, so basically the coaches and gurus are gonna tell you, calculate what the ARV is. So let's say $200,000 minus the repair costs, which is four, $40,000. That comes out to $160,000 and then multiply that by 70% and that's the most you can give in an offer. So around $112,000. Now, me going back into real life, because this isn't YouTube world where wholesaling's perfect and everything's easy. I mean, real life's different. In most cases, in that type of scenario, because I know $200,000 ARV houses in Port St. Lucie, Florida, my cash buyers are willing to pay $145,000 for houses like that. And if my max allowable offer is 112, most wholesalers in Port St. Lucie will not go above that price. And my acquisitions guy will swoop it in at like 120 and then sell to a cat and sell to a cash buyer for 145 and I'll make $25,000. So literally all this 70% multiplied by ARV minus repairs. It's not true. It's stupid. There's a lot of other words I would love to call MAOs from coaches and gurus, but I'm going to keep it PG at this channel. It's just a load of, it's just a load of garbage. Seriously. Like I'll make $25,000 and most guru students will not do it because it's outside that realm. Like, are you too good to make $25,000? Like, I know I'm not too good for that. Like, seriously. So the way that I calculate my offers is basically, I just, honestly, I just try to get the lowest price possible. That's really it. I am more rapport centered with, with my acquisitions. And really, I want to spend more time talking to the seller than calculating repairs. So if I'm dealing with someone and I look at it, I know 200,000 is the ARV, 40,000 is the repairs, 160,000. The way that I calculate and the way I prefer that most people do it is, okay, so 200,000 is the ARV minus $40,000 in repairs, that's $160,000, correct? I really hope I'm doing my math here. I'm doing mental math in my head here, but basically at $160,000, you need to figure out, this is the part where most coaches and YouTubers out there don't talk about this, but you need to figure out that $160,000 is basically what the thing is worth right now. You need to figure out how much of a discount your cash buyers will give on top of the value. What I mean by this is let's say, for example, how did I come up with that $145,000 my cash buyer will pay? Most of my cash buyers are thrilled and literally ecstatic or super pumped up to buy my properties at a 10% discount. So 10% of $160,000 comes out to $144,000. Now for very easy and rough numbers, so this video is as easy as possible to explain, I'm just saying $145,000. Let, let's take $1,000 more or less in the repairs and maybe more value for the ARV, but roughly $145,000. From there, I just calculated, which people think is the hardest thing in the world when I tell them is like, just figure out what a cash buyer is going to pay for it and then reverse engineer it. What I mean by that is we calculate the 200,000 minus the 40, 160 multiplied by the discount that cash buyers are willing to pay for. And then boom, we're at 145,000. That's how much a cash buyer is willing to pay. From there, you can bake in your assignment fee if you want. I hear a lot of coaches talking about that. So I'll take 10,000 off of there. And then my, then my max offer is going to be 135,000. That's fine. In all honesty, 
If you're trying to get your first whole virtual wholesaling deal or your first wholesaling deal in general, and, and your seller says, I'll sell up to 141,000 and you know, you make $4,000 on it. Like why not take it? If it's your first wholesaling deal, like $4,000, if you spent no money on the marketing that could absolutely change your life in wholesaling real estate. So really you want to give the least amount possible in your initial offer. So for this example, really what our acquisitions people and really what I would do if I was on the appointment was I want to give an offer that makes me a lot of money, but also is not too low where I'm going to get kicked out of the house. Now, the worst thing possible, in my opinion, is you give an offer and the seller takes it. This might seem really weird to say, but what if I offer the seller $130,000 for the property and they just shake my hand and say, deal. That's great. I make 15,000, but that means they're that probably means they were, they were willing to take 110 or maybe even $115,000 for the house. So I want to do an offer, which will be so low. They say, no, I'll go for the no, but also not too low enough where they're gonna be like, Zach, get out of this house. It's so offensive. And really the percentage of someone kicking you out of a house or getting offended is directly correlated to how much rapport you built with the seller. So there's really two ways to do it. You can do the meet in the middle method, which is basically you ask them how much they want to sell it for. They give you $150,000 for it. They say they want to sell for 150, offer 110, logically meet in the middle at 130, make your 15 K. That's nice. What I like to do is I like to offer basically off the bat, maybe a hundred thousand dollars for the house. Very low, but we got really good rapport. Maybe I go up to maybe 105, 110,000, and then I make about 35,000 on the deal. That's about our average. And that's basically the average wholesaling deal that we really do here at Flip with Rick. And that's it. I mean, really calculating your first offer, you want the seller to give the price first, and then you work their way down to get the lowest price they're willing to sign a contract for that day. You don't want them to really come back the next couple of days and think about it if another wholesaler comes back with a higher offer. Again, you are not here to give the highest offers to your seller. You're here to give the best and quickest and easiest solution because we want to make the most profit possible while helping the seller. So that's it guys. That's really how you calculate the perfect wholesaling offer. Really? Again, I love to do it. I do 60, $70,000 wholesale deals out there. I don't do them every single day, but we do it on a really very consistent basis because we're very good at building rapport. But again, the perfect wholesaling offer, you really need to understand this. The biggest factor for you to calculate it really well is figuring out how much of a percentage your cash buyer is willing to pay for your property. So you go offer them a property and see how much they're willing to buy it for. And then you can sort of do some calculations from there. So that's it guys. I really appreciate the support you've been giving us on this channel beyond blessed at the support. Thank you guys so much. Have a blessed day.